Ten years ago, in March 2012, there was an armed coup d'état in Beijing. It failed and laid the groundwork for a decade-long brutal factional war within Zhongnanhai, the Chinese leadership compound. Recently, a new book revealed details behind the coup while raising more questions about the timing and purpose of the book. Who is the author? Why did an American media outlet hasten to remove their interview of the author? What was revealed in the book? And how is it related to the ongoing CCP power struggle? Hello, everyone. I'm Lei. Welcome to my show. Before the CCP's 20th National Congress in the fall, there has been a lot of saber rattling and crossfire between Chinese leader Xi Jinping and the anti-Xi faction. China Duel was recently published in the U.S., and the book provides an insider's view of the 2012 coup before Xi became the fifth CCP leader. The book is written in English by a man pen named Xiang Yang. In an interview with Voice of America, Xiang revealed that he is a third-generation princeling who has close access to the inner circles of the leadership and maintains a friendship with the Bo Xilai family. Those of you who have followed my channel know that Bo Xilai was at the center of the coup that was orchestrated by the Jiang faction to remove Xi. Bo was the most ambitious and aggressive CCP princeling, whose dream was to become the top guy one day. Let's first take a look at the coup from 10 years ago before getting into the analysis. Hu Jintao was about to finish his second term and stepped down at the end of 2012. The Hu faction and the Jiang faction had already reached a consensus to let Xi Jinping succeed Hu. The reason? She seemed harmless to both factions. As he was low key and had no factional affiliation, behind the scene, however, the Jiang faction had planned to get rid of Xi within two years and replace him with Bo Xilai, the then party secretary of Chongqing, one of China's largest cities. But the plot was exposed by Bo Xilai's police chief Wang Lijun. After Wang helped Bo's wife cover up the murder of British businessman Neil Hayward. He got into arguments with Bo. Bo was said to have slapped Wang in the face. Knowing how cruel Bo was and fearing for his life, Wang fled to the American consulate in Chengdu on February 6, 2012, asking for refuge. Wang was well prepared, though. He brought with him evidence against Bo Xilai. One, documentation about the organ harvesting of prisoners of conscience, mostly Falun Gong practitioners. An atrocious crime that started in Dalian City when Bo was the mayor, and two documentation of Bo's coup attempt against Xi Jinping. The U.S. government handed Wang over to Beijing subsequently. One week later, Xi Jinping was visiting the United States as the future leader of China, and was informed by the White House of the information Wang Lijun had brought to the American consulate. That's when she learned of the coup against him. One month later, on March 15th, Bo Xilai was removed from his official CCP post. A few days later, on March 19th, people heard gunshots in Beijing, and the rumor that something big happened in Beijing was spreading. Xiang Yang's book gives details of what happened on that day. According to the book, Hu Jintao deployed the 38th Army's 113th Division and the 8th Army Air Corps stationed in Hebei. To enter Beijing and surrounded buildings controlled by Zhou Yongkang, who was the head of the powerful political and legal affairs committee. By the way, the 38th Army was considered the Chinese PLA's elite troop that guarded the capital city. On that day, Zhou Yongkang was with two princelings, Chen Haosu and He Guangye. The pair were friends of Bo Xilai and were encouraging Zhou to send troops to Zhongnanhai to launch a coup. But it was too late. They were already surrounded by the troops mobilized by Hu Jintao. The military surrounded Zhou Yongkang controlled buildings, the Ministry of Public Security, the armed police headquarters, among others. They opened fire. Military personnel eventually disarmed resisting police forces. While this happened, the PLA's Eighth Regiment of the Air Force played an assisting role by conducting an air control over Beijing. Voice of America interviewed the book's author on July 5th, but took down the article less than a day after it went online. The removal of the interview sounds more intriguing than the book itself. 
Was it because VOA found the content of the book or the interview not credible? Or was it because the Biden administration didn't want to upset Xi Jinping by having an interview published of someone from the faction opposing him? By the way, Voice of America is a U.S. government-funded media outlet. In the interview, Xiang Yang, the author, told VOA that his grandfather joined the CCP's revolution early on. As a third-generation princeling, he is able to enjoy privileges and navigate between government and business easily. He also said that he was personally involved in the coup attempt. Xiang said that he and his father were mainly involved in helping coordinate several pro Bo Xilai military units. These included the 14th Group Army, which was part of the Chengdu military region stationed in Kunming, and the 13th Group Army stationed in Chongqing. The book reviews a lot of details, but there are also things that don't make sense to me. First, the book seems to imply that the two princelings who were with Zhou Yongkang on the fateful night were the main actors behind Zhou's plan for the coup. The author of The China Duel said that after Bo Xilai was detained, the two princelings tried to persuade Zhou Yongkang to immediately send troops to Zhou Nanhai because they worried that they would be taken into custody by Hu Jintao, just like Bo Xilai had been. The book made Zhou look almost passive in the coup. If these two princelings did play such an important role, why didn't Hu Jintao or Xi Jinping take them down? If they really feared that they would be locked up like Bo Xilai, how come they haven't been and are still active? Secondly, the book says that the two princelings were close to Bo Xilai like brothers. They tried to resolve the problem of over-concentration of power by having one person acting as General Secretary of the CCP, Chairman of the Central Military Commission, and the President of the country. In other words, they did not want one person, the leader of the party, to hold all three positions, so they planned a coup. Did you get that? It sounds as if Zhou Yongkang and Bo Xilai were organizing a righteous attempt to reform against the CCP's dictatorship, and Bo and Zhou were the tragic martyrs in the battle. In my opinion, this narrative is carefully crafted to feed to the anti-Xi forces in the West, because Bo and Zhou would absolutely not give up any power if they became the party leader. The book further said that Zhou Yongkang, who was trapped in the building, tried to call Hu Jintao but didn't reach him, and then asked Jiang Zemin for help. Jiang then forced Hu to stop the confrontation. Hu Jintao later made a self-criticism statement at a Politburo meeting, and Zhou Yongkang was locked up in jail. This made Jiang Zemin look like a savior who ended the coup. But the very person who chose Bo Xilai to succeed Hu Jintao was Jiang Zemin. The person who made Zhou Yongkang so powerful was also Jiang Zemin. Jiang and his deputy, Zhen Qinghong, were the real mastermind behind the coup. I highly suspect that the Jiang faction was releasing the book in the West just in time for the Beidaihe summer meetings and the CCP's 20th National Congress. Although the book may have been written with a political motive in mind, some details are very interesting. For example, the book disclosed that even though Bo Xilai and Zhou Yongkang worked hand in hand, that didn't mean they trusted each other. Bo gave Zhou a handmade gold pen and a Swiss watch. According to the book, Bo asked Wang Lijun to put a bug in the pieces. So even though Zhou was the head of public security, aka the security czar, he was being monitored by Wang Lijun, a local police chief who worked for Bo Xilai. After giving the recording to Bo, Wang kept an extra copy for himself. He might have included it in the evidence he gave to the Americans when he fled. Speaking to Voice of America, the book author said he wanted to tell the story to reveal a truth, which is, even members of the CCP's top echelon face the threat of the doom at any time. He got that right. Any CCP business can turn out to be ugly business. So my friends, stay away from the CCP. Don't even get close. If you do, they may drag you down with them. There's no winner in the CCP's infighting. They're all going to lose. Stay as far away as you can. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.